Papua New Guinea Defence Force conclude asset protection training. Plan and book for historical agricultural site launched. And calls to improve response to disasters. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. The Delta Company from the PNG Defence Forces 1st Royal Pacific Islands Regiment is concluding the Vital Assets Protection Training. It's part of the regiment's ongoing exercise to protect important government assets. As 1RPIR prepares also for the major security operations for APEC, such exercises are considered significant in case of public unrest. MTV News was privileged to film part of the training, which at most times is closed to the media. This is a strategic exercise that if in the event that a government asset is at the threat of vandalism, the defense force steps in to protect the asset. In this drill, members of 1RPIR, the Alpha Company, are acting as angry landowners, while the Delta Company represents the PNGDF. Those posing as angry landowners are upset because they claim the national government had failed to address their outstanding grievances. This exercise prepares soldiers to contain disputes using negotiation techniques at the confrontation level. As soldiers are not allowed to use firearms unless their lives are in danger. What the guys are doing here now on Mount Ariyama is, is part of the Block 1 training. Uh, so they are providing a vital asset protection to the Mount Ariyama facility. Warrant Officer Sam Maui, who is the squad commander of the Delta Company, gives us an insight into how a common post is set up as the center of operation. The command post must have a radio center, including a team of medical officers who stand ready to attend to injured soldiers. A number of observation posts similar to this one are set up as strategic areas to monitor movement. In this part of the exercise, soldiers who acted as angry landowners will force their way to the second barricade where they are met by the Quick Reaction Force, a unit from the Bravo Company. 1RPIR is the unit leading the PNG Defence Force in APEC security operations alongside the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary. Provide vital asset protection, uh, you know, vehicle checkpoints, provide security to ports, uh, provide security to the cruise liners. Uh, so there's a range of uh, mission essential tasks that have been given to us. So our training is, is focused and centered around setting us up for success to be able to deliver those or achieve those tasks effectively and efficiently. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. The National Museum and Art Gallery together with UNESCO and partners launched a book for the Cook Archaeological Site in Western Highlands Province. A draft management plan will be presented to the UNESCO office in Paris for final approval on the management of the site. The draft recognizes Cook as a state property and the Kowelka people of Baisu as the traditional landowners. The National Museum Conservation and Environment Protection Authority, UNESCO, Australian Government and the Western Highlands Provincial Government are working closely to make Cook a tourism destination. The management plan will see short and long-term plans for archaeological research, management and protection of the site. Short-term plan will include how the landowners of Kawelka clan will benefit from the site. In the long run, the national and provincial government and its partners are working to develop the site to attract tourists. Now the handing of our memories from all colon on future generations. Challenge time is long studying nuclear chapter, the work of Cook. And then launching from Cook management document. Cook Early Agricultural Site has become PNG's first and only World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It took about 10 years to complete the management plan. 
A committee was formed to regulate the site as well as producing educational materials, dissemination of literature for local and international tourists. For community conflict, politics, and tribal conflict, this like a heavy stuff number, good local development in the local area in our local because of this like heavy by stuff. The Kewalka people were urged to respect the early agriculture site and allow for developments into the area. People are allowed to cultivate their land but not into the site. Vasenata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The National Police Women's Conference ended recently in Kimbe, West New Britain. The five-day conference centered on advocating for equal participation in the force. The initiative is part of the Women's Advisory Network to strengthen women's roles in communities. Police Minister Jelta Wong, Police Commissioner Gary Baki and host Governor Sassindran Mutavel were present for the meet. Governor Mutavel also presented a vehicle to the patrol unit which was received by PPC John Meady. The conference was attended by representatives from the Australian Federal Police, New Zealand Police and Police Women all across the country. A new era for the Correctional Institution Services as Bomana signs a Memorandum of Understanding with the Human Development Institute. The MOU is a partnership with CIS Bomana for new rehabilitation programs. It creates an agreement for HDI to set up a campus at CIS Bomana where inmates can get a professional degree in business. Human Development Institute is now able to set up a campus at the Correctional Institute Services, Bomana. This is following the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding on Friday. Founder of HDI, Samuel Tem, told MTV News that the journey began in 2002 when he started a program called Loving Service to the Needy. To them to try and help rehabilitate the prisoners so that you know, at least they have a different perspective about life and hopefully they will implement and use some of the knowledge to, uh, you know, to at, at least develop a better life for them, a better standard of living for them and their and the families. Commander Kidi Keko sees this partnership as very important. Correctional services cannot meet all requirements in terms of resources and that is where HDI will come in with resources. Really enforcing our policy, our prison rehabilitation policy that was launched early last year and uh, we're trying to, we, we'll have to make use of it because the policy has been endorsed by the government through the minister and the commissioner and uh, it will be, uh, I, I, I'll put it this way, I don't want it to collect dust. But what we can do out of it, uh, we'll need to implement it. Prisoners at the minimum risk security areas will be the ones who will be attached. I would like to see that other prisons, where they can, uh, be also part of this, this process, that is the public-private partnership process, so that we can sustain ourselves. And, uh... Classes will begin in the next two weeks. Campus where where the inmates here can, can achieve a professional degree from overseas. So this is what this is, what this is all about today. Lilian Soperakinea, National MTV News. Being behind prison bars is not the end of one's life if they are willing to work hard and change. Jamie Pang, Group Operations Manager for the Palm Betting Shop, Rappaport Resort and Sanctuary Spa and Hotel, gave a motivational talk to the inmates at Bomana Prison following the signing of the MOU. During the signing of the MOU at Bomana, businessman Jamie Pang, who hails from Kokopo, talked about his experience as a prisoner. Hard time, 23 hour lockdown, one hour to sun sunlight. But police are brooking me, first time he stopped a gang, he started walking around his passing too. Now, I'm not hiking this like, pass for me, but me like talking to me, blah. you know, late, no, change him life, blah, you blah. Now a successful businessman, he told MTV News that it's never too late to make a change. Everyone needs a chance. So his group of companies is elated to support this initiative. It doesn't matter what your past is, uh, you can always change for a better positive future. It takes hard work, but uh, everybody can get there. Many other business houses around the country are also partnering with HDI to progress the initiative. 
Lilian Superakinea, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Stay tuned. We'll have more when we come back. Welcome back. Members of the opposition want government agencies to improve the time of response to disasters. Opposition leader Patrick Pruach says proper policies and framework must be established so restoration of lives and services are addressed promptly. He says the National Disaster and Emergency Office must be adequately funded every year. After a week of distress, relief is slowly reaching the affected communities hit by the 7.5 magnitude earthquake in Hela and Southern Highlands. Despite roads severely damaged and communication a problem, authorities have made attempts to restore services. However, the opposition wants this slow response be improved. The disaster office is, over the years has been poorly funded and how do you expect a quick response from an organization where, where it has not been receiving sufficient attention and funding over the years. I believe that national government should do uh, something to ensure that there is uh, funding available for emergencies like this. Northern Governor Gary Zufa says the scale of damage is huge and relevant authorities must properly assess the disaster. He says passing proper legislation to back the National Disaster Office will also require adequate funding. And that's what we have to start being concerned about. The response mechanism, it, it's too slow, it's delayed, it's, it's not, there's no anxious you know, effort, energy involved. There's no sense of urgency and it's very, it's very worrying. See, if you don't respond in a timely manner, then there are loss of lives. That's the... That's the immediate risk. 600,000. Speaking yesterday in Port Mosby, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says it's been a slow start by relevant agencies. However, relief is reaching affected communities as roads open up and communication restored. And now we are communicating directly with the district administrators and uh, uh, district CEOs and the provincial administrators. We are working with uh, the project uh, areas uh, like ExxonMobil and oil sets. All the government supplies and food and water and systems are now being distributed to the remote villages right across uh, the country. Uh, we are now s supplying food uh, in Mendi, in Moro, in, uh, in, in Kutubu area, in, in Mount Bosavi. We are down in that, uh, we are just loading cargo to go to uh, uh, Tari. Meanwhile, the death toll has passed 90. The Prime Minister says this is expected to climb as authorities reach affected communities. The Restoration Committee. Uh, emergency Restoration Committee, which has been set up to uh, create emergency uh, response uh, on a daily contact now and on a situation report on a daily basis. Jack Lapave, Junior National MTV News. Meanwhile, Northern Governor Gary Jufa is urging all provinces to establish provincial disaster centers. Jufa says the country is prone to natural disasters and provinces must be equipped with all necessary capacity to respond when disasters strike. He says the government must seriously push provinces to establish disaster centers. What we need to do is ensure that every provincial, every province has a a disaster management center. Every province should have one. The country should have a disaster management policy. We are a country that sits on a rim of fire. Our province has a natural disaster policy and we have a natural disaster unit that is funded to be able to respond to disasters immediately. The board of Octedi Mining Limited has approved a donation of 50 million kina to help restore services and infrastructure to the provinces and communities impacted by the recent earthquake. Chairman Sir Moy Ave said given the magnitude of this disaster, OTML is pleased to offer a helping hand at this time of great distress. The funding will assist the impacted areas in Western Province and the devastated provinces in the Highlands region. Meanwhile, operations have been interrupted. Three critical pipelines for the mill suffered extensive damage. 
Lay Biscuit Company donated two 40-foot container loads of biscuits worth 150,000 kina to those affected by the earthquake. The company's sponsored rugby league team, Snacks Tigers, officially handed over the donation to the Mandy Morks team in Lay yesterday. Company CEO Ian Chow called on other companies to support the appeal and bring back normalcy to affected areas. Some team members from the Lay Biscuit Snacks Tigers Rugby League team gathered here yesterday with the Lay Biscuit Company Chief Executive Officer Ian Chow to present two 40 food container load of biscuit to the Mandy Murrooks yesterday. Over 6,000 cases of biscuits with a retail cost of 150,000 kina was donated to those affected by the 7.5 magnitude earthquake in the Highlands region. They requested a uh, trial match between Tigers and uh, many Muruks to, to uh, raise funds for the uh, disaster victims. Unfortunately, we had already booked the game with Koroka Lahani, so we decided to assist by giving a container of biscuits because many Muruks has always been the uh, arch nemesis of Tigers. And on the field, we kill each other on the field, but outside, we are brothers. So uh, this is a gesture for Lay Stack Tigers team for Mini Muruk's team. Um, yes, we, we are brothers and we hope your, your, when your, uh, your people are in need, your people are also our people too. The second 40-foot container load will be handed over by Mount Hagen Catholic Diocese to Mandy Catholic Diocese. The administrator for Mandy Rugby League Inc., Emmanuel Toll, thanked the competitor, the late Biscuit Snacks Tigers and the company for the donation. I'd like to extend a very big thank you to Ian Chow and the uh, Lay Snacks Tigers for um, stepping on board. The Rugby League fraternity in Papua New Guinea has really helped a lot. Um, for most the Rugby League and uh, the Vipers team, the Goroko Lions team, the Miox team, and uh, even the Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League, um, they're using the Hunters uh, platform against the Ipswich Jets uh, to, on Sunday to help us raise funds as well. But uh, um, the Lay, Lay Snacks Tigers have uh, taken the lead in uh, donating us a a um, container of uh, biscuits which would go directly to all the victims in the, up in Southern Highlands and uh, it's a very big help indeed and uh, we're really thankful for uh, what they did. Thank you very much Lay Snacks Tigers. Lay Biscuit Snacks Tigers coach Stanley Tepan said everyone should be supporting the appeal to help those affected by the earthquake especially in Southern Highlands and Ella province. Again, we're, we're, we're lucky to that we're sponsored by Lay Biscuit. Uh, we're lucky that we're a product, we're a brand and um, you know, it, it's it's just uh, a small way that uh, that we we've helped. But um, these sort of things, you know, if, if we can help each other, we you know we, we we have issues with our our company, our players as well on certain times, and um, just just supporting each other, I think it's 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 a big thing for for uh, for the company and, and for the people of Hela and Southern Highlands. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. Churches in Leh are being called to donate in unity towards victims of the earthquake as well. City's pastor's fraternal chairman, Bishop Pinaria Sialis, says churches must do more than just pray for those affected by the disaster. Churchgoers in Leh have been encouraged to give at their local church or drop donations at the Speedway CLC Church, where they will be sent to the affected areas in the highlands. The lay minister's fraternal is calling on Christians in lay to donate non-perishable items in cash or kind towards disaster relief for the highlands through their churches. The CLC Church's Reverend Pinaria Cialis says this is being done in support of existing relief programs in the city. Because we'd like to be part of what's happening in, in, in our nation. Um, not just praying, we, we pray but we feel that we, we need to become answers to our prayers. The Highlands region was hit by a 7.5 magnitude earthquake late last month, with aftershocks still being experienced. The worst affected areas include Hela and the Southern Highlands province. The death toll has climbed past 90. Meanwhile, Southern Highlands students at the University of Technology are also raising awareness on the disaster with hopes to assist the affected people back home. Yesterday, they conducted an awareness in Eriku. Yeah, we are also challenged uh, to, to answer 
in, in, in ways we can. Donations can be dropped off at the CLC Speedway Church and will continue for an indefinite period. I'm appealing to churches in Leh to uh, bring in the uh, and kind and the donations to uh, uh, this, uh, the centre here at CLC Speedway. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Leh. This is National MTV News, stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, the extreme weather event that's battered far north Queensland is now officially a catastrophe. While floodwaters are starting to recede, it could be days before some towns can be reached and the cleanup begins. Entire suburbs engulfed by flood waters, this disaster has today been declared a catastrophe and it's easy to see why. We have now been flooded since our second day. Some homes now have currents surging beneath them. Others are totally surrounded. Water travelled at pace outside the local petrol station and created several spectacles around town. Look at it go, eh? Eating it. There are still signs of what once was a highway. But roads remain cut off and there's plenty of potential hazards. To the north, Innisfail locals still took their Saturday morning stroll, severely flooding several streets and turning some homes into islands. Staple foods have been in high demand, as is clear on the shelves. There remains a major flood warning for the Herbert River. Its murky mud is now inside homes. <laughs> Some supplies were being delivered by boat today. They arrived from the air to the 70-plus stranded school kids south of Tully. They're still stuck but remain in good spirits. Even if you had a car, the roads are in ruin. It's not stopping locals making the most of the conditions. Failing that, it was a great day for a fish but not much fun for the dogs. Stonehenge in southwest England has long battered experts about how and why it was erected more than 4,000 years ago. Now British historians believe the task of constructing the monument may have actually been part of a celebration. Three, four. Heaving for history. <laughs> Volunteers at Stonehenge today trying to repeat what Neolithic people did around four and a half thousand years ago. Do you currently feel like Neolithic woman doing this? Uh, that's an interesting concept, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the aim of the experiment was to see how this ancient monument was built. And historians now say that it was the construction process itself, as much as the end result, that mattered. We know that it was a prehistoric temple aligned with the movements of the sun and it was used as such. But the building process, the alterations, all those changes and coming together as a community might well have been the more important factor for prehistoric people. English Heritage say these photos of the Nias people of Indonesia taken a hundred years ago help prove their point. The images show how moving great rocks has long been accompanied by dancing and dressing up in costumes. They say it was probably the same spirit that helped build Stonehenge, with people drawn from across Britain to come and feast and make building a festival. In other words, a celebration of construction, recreated today. Should we try that again? Just bring the ropes closer together. That's it. And this is the first time an official rock pool like this has ever taken place at Stonehenge. But it doesn't always go to plan. Yet even with the odd tumble, today's experiment shows what can be achieved when strangers come together for a common good. True Guy Sports is next. Don't go away. True Guy Sports. Right. 
Welcome to Chukai Sports. Relly Kaputin has left the West Texas A&M school after finishing all her athletic semesters. She is one of the best athletes to ever come through the track and field program. She is a nine-time All-American and a two-time individual NCAA Division II national champion. Kaputin was also named the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Association National Women's Field Athlete of the Year in 2017. She is the defending indoor triple jump national champion. The first of the NSL doubleheader in Port Moresby saw Southern Strikers go up against Medang FC. Medang proved too good for Strikers, beating them three goals to two. Medang was strong in the first half. Their experience from the OFC Champions League proved to pay off as they netted three goals early in the match. Southern Strikers tried to break their defense but was unable to as Medang's backline stood strong, stopping their attempts. The score remained 3-0 at half-time. In the second half, the young strikers team pushed their attack, resulting in a goal in the 60th minute through Richard Alois. Five minutes later, Alois got his second. Strikers picked up pace, threatening Medang's backline. They had several attempts on goal but were unsuccessful. Medang also had a few chances to score, but failed. Under the scorching sun, fatigue kicked in on the players, causing both sides to lose ball possession. Medang managed to hold on, beating Southern Strikers three goals to two. Lajal Levet, National MTV Sports. President of PNG Swimming Inc. Elizabeth Wells says preparations are currently underway for this year's Theodist National Swimming Championships. The event will also showcase PNG's Commonwealth Games representatives. Close to 100 swimmers are expected to participate. We have the Theodist National Championships happening here on the Friday the 16th, Saturday two sessions, morning and afternoon, and Sunday one session in the morning. Uh, the morning sessions will start at 8 o'clock and the afternoon sessions on Friday start at 4, warm up, 5 o'clock start. Saturday afternoon it's 3, 3 to 4 o'clock. This is National Swimming Championships will be used to identify swimmers for the BSP Excellence Squad. Well, we're, our preparation continues. Um, the swimmers uh, aim for the National BSP National Aquatic Excellence Squads and the team will be chosen or the train on squad will be chosen from the bronze upward to platinum um, or diamond is the, the highest one but our main main goal is now is for Oceana and see where they are at when we get to Oceana and then prepare them it doesn't stop we just keep going she says there are more events this year and swimmers have shown to go even further in terms of distance. Yeah, all the four strokes will be, take, will be participated in, competed in, including, which include the 50, 100, 200 freestyle backstroke, breaststroke and butterfly, the 400 and the 800 and the 1500 freestyle, plus um, the four, 200 and the 400 IM. She also added that swimmers representing PNG at the Commonwealth Games will also use this event as part of their preparations. Yeah, we have a really good group of competitive swimmers happening, coming along. It includes Lay Club, uh, our Commonwealth Games swimmers, which includes Josh Torreira, Leonard Calate, Ashley Sito, um, Ryan Maskelin and Sam Sagers. We also have our Masters Club swimmers, they'll be taking part and swimming in their master's category, but they'll all be swimming together in, as an open event. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Don't go away, Chukai Sports continues after these short messages. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. In the NRL, the head of an American consortium is looking to buy the New Zealand Warriors backed by big money from ex-NFL players. The group has major plans to revamp the club. They made a name for themselves starring in the biggest event in American sport. 
pretty impressive that you you both have Super Bowl rings. That's crazy that two brothers have Super Bowl rings, you know? Ma'ake and Chris Kimoyatu want to bring that championship feeling to the Warriors. To do that, they've sent their business partner, Hawaiian politician Richard Fale, to Auckland this week. All three were born in Tonga and want to be the first Pacific Islanders to step into professional sports ownership. It looks like it's going to be realised through the, through the Warriors. They initially wanted to partner with Auckland Rugby League in the purchase, but believe a confidentiality agreement was broken, which could lead to legal action. We don't want to do that. We can we can reach a greater magnitude of, of success if we just work together. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. ARL and other groups have previously made bids, but struggled to meet the asking price of Warriors owner Eric Watson, a reputed $20 million. That $20 million New Zealand dollars is really not a problem. Um, it, it's... It's all about, um, can we lead the organization to success? The money is there and with it, they plan to overhaul the club's football operations and put a huge focus on fan engagement. They also hope to secure talents the club has previously failed to attract. Would you look at bringing someone like Jason Tamarolo back home to New Zealand? Let's just say he's, he's, a, he's a guy who should come and play at home. This week, Fale and a New York-based lawyer will be working on details of the deal, which could be completed in around a month. To cricket, after losing the T20 series to England, the Black Caps were hoping to wrap up the one-day international series in Christchurch today, but they were played off in the decider. With Ross Taylor already rolled out, this wasn't the start the Black Caps were after. This will be out, he's claimed it, Butler, and he's gone again, Munro. Colin Munro's latest early blunder showing the pace of the wicket was hard to pick, but fellow opener Martin Guptill was willing to wait. Welcome. Oh, it's Martin Guptill, he's just been waiting for anything for. And with the wickets falling, Taylor's replacement Mark Chapman left many wondering if a half-fit Taylor would have been a better option. Another one that turned in New Zealand, they go from bad to worst. With only 14 runs to his name in the series so far, the pressure was certainly on local man Henry Nichols to rescue the innings. Big shot. High into the leg side. Ofi's not gone all the way, dropped. He went on to make 55 as he put on 84 with the in for Mitchell Satner, who top scored with 67. New Zealand's recovering to make 223, where at one stage it looks like making 150 would be a stretch. But it was evident early on that this game wouldn't go down to the wire. Alex Hales and Johnny Bairstow making a mockery of the run chase. It's out there. Those kids are going to have to duck out the way because that is a maximum. You just wonder if England were batting on the same pitch. Bairstow taking 22 off an Ish Sodi over on his way to back to back hundreds. Oh, he's gone again and he's standing there admiring it. They're all interested in the crowd. Bairstow making 104. New Zealand's probably lucky to win two games against the quality English side. My job is now to go out and, and try and score big hundreds and, um, and, and contribute to, to match winning scores. The Black Caps once again failing to conquer in the big matches. Momentum firmly with England heading into the pink ball test. Still in cricket, the bad blood between Australia and South Africa has gone too far. Officials are furious at a crude attempt to bait David Warner that was seemingly endorsed by South African officials. As cricket do the talking, South African fans delivered a sledge of their own. Wearing the face of Sonny Bill Williams to remind Warner of the history between the rugby star and his now wife, Candice. Sonny Bill, uh, what do you think of the cricket so far? Hey, it's, it's nice to see my ex, ex's uh, husband getting a nice 50. A 2007 encounter in a Sydney hotel toilet cubicle is understood to be the subject of the sledge which sparked last week's infamous stairway scuffle. This time South Africa's players kept quiet, but the nation's officials are now in hot water after two were snapped posing with fans wearing the Sunny Bill cutouts. All this with Warner's wife and two young daughters sitting in the stands. Publicly, Cricket Australia isn't willing to comment, but privately they're both concerned and disappointed that Protea's officials are not only condoning such behaviour, but openly encouraging it from fans. Warner responded with a half-century as tensions again simmered on the field. 
Rabada needs to be careful of that little nudge of Smith's shoulder. I doubt the match referees missed that. We're not going to take a step backwards. Uh, we know what the game is spirit and we'll, we'll always play around with that. There's a lot of passion, a lot of pride in that change room, so we're pretty comfortable with where we're standing. Relations between the two teams at an all-time low, and we're not even halfway through the tour. And that ends Chukai Sports. The weather details up next. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux. Celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, in the southern region, a shower or two all across the region in Port Moresby, Daru, Kerama, Alutau and Popandita. In the Mamase region, showers in Leh, rain showers in Medang and Wewak, showers and thunderstorms in Vanimore. In the New Guinea Islands region, showers and thunderstorms in Kaviang, Buka and Lorenga, and showers with light to moderate northwest winds in Kimbe, Kokopo and Rubau. And in the Highlands region, showers, then morning fog with light variable winds in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. Forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours, strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of Vitia Strait, Dampier Strait to Siasi Islands, Long Island to Medang, Bogia to Wewak, Aitape, Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian border, including Manus and its western group of islands to New Island and also northern coastline of New Britain. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, Kerama to Yule Island, Hood Point to Samurai Island, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres. Waters of New Britain to New Island and Bougainville, seas of 1.5 to 2 metres. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres. Waters of Finchhafen to Vitiaz Dampier Strait, to Siasi Island, to Long Island and to Medang, seas of 1.5 to 2.5 metres. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 1.5 to 2 metres. Ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea, seas light to moderate with southwest winds at 10 to 20 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas light to moderate with northwest to southwest winds at 10 to 20 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, seas moderate to rather rough with northwest winds at 15 to 25 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas moderate to rather rough with northwest winds at 15 to 25 knots. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. Now before we go, Kurdish forces in Syria say the fight for Afrin isn't over yet. The YPG are denying claims by the Turkish president. He said his troops and allied rebels have Afrin city surrounded and could move in any moment. Now new drone footage shows footage of damage done to an ancient temple. We warn viewers some images you're about to see are disturbing. Ancient temple, famed for its carved stone lions that had survived intact for over 3,000 years. But now exclusive new drone footage shows little of the Ain Dara temple remains, the telltale scars of airstrikes amid the green Syrian countryside. Six weeks since Turkey began its offensive against Kurdish militia in the northern Syrian region of Afrin, homes are leveled over a hundred civilians killed. 
Turkey insists it is targeting terrorists and trying to avoid civilian casualties. Those who have the means to leave have packed up their belongings. But some, like Mohammed, feel they have no choice but to stay, hiding inside with his wife and ten small children, placing their fate, they say, in God's hands. Our faith in God is strong, and we only fear Him. Of course we fear for our children, but where should we go? Wherever we go is the same. His children, too, put on a brave face. They no longer flinch at the sound of explosions. For another family being treated at Afrin hospital, tragedy has already struck. Benefsh was in the kitchen cooking. I heard the sound of a shell falling in front of the door. It was dark. I went out and saw my son Furat. He lost his legs and hands, but he was still alive. My daughter was dead, and I took her out of the rubble. Three of their four children were killed. Look at this. These children, what are they guilty of? Are they politicians? Are they military? In the morgue, their small bodies are prepared for burial, faced with the senseless loss of young life, a desperate cry for help. Where is the USA? Where is Russia? Where are the human rights? What is happening to us? I call on the Germans to respond. This is a massacre in Afrin. So far, no sign her call will be answered. And now we'll take a look at a recap of tonight's stories. The PNG Defense Force conclude asset protection training, plans underway to preserve historical agricultural site and calls to improve response to natural disasters. And that's how we end National MTV News this Saturday, the 10th of March, 2018. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.